Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us. And you may have noticed that we're standing in a field with corn stalks. We're going to be planting soybeans here. And one of the things that we think about with soybeans is keeping broadleaf weeds under control. As there are more weeds that are resistant to Roundup and some of the other herbicides that are available, some of these choices can be a little tricky. So we'll talk through them on today's show. Well, even though this field may not be planted, there are a lot of acres that are in the ground. And with the corn now at this point, we want to take a look at mid-season corn fertility. What is the yield limiting factor on your farm? We're going to discuss that today. Uh, I still get back to weeds, Brian. Weeds like our weed of the week are fun to control. We'll show you this tough weed later in the show, but first, here's today's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, I just wanted to talk, Darren, about, you know, I get these questions from non-farmers that say, well, farming must be pretty easy because all you have to do is go plant that crop and then you come back about six months later to harvest. What do you do with all that time in between? That sounds fun. You know, just try <laughs> that on your garden at home. Just plant it. Do nothing else to it until you're ready to go pick some fruits and vegetables out of there. Good luck with that one. You know, there's all kinds of things going on in fields every day of the year from weather conditions that are changing to bugs, diseases that could be present out there. There's all kinds of things going on and farmers are just constantly out looking at their fields making judgment decisions on okay should I put a little more fertilizer on here should I control this or that where do you want to start Brian there's just tons and tons of things that are going on yep well to begin with the most important thing is that farmers take a look at their fields on a regular basis so because of all the things that Darren mentioned there anything could pop up in the fields there is a lot of management that goes on during the year when a farmer is out there scouting he is going to be looking for weeds for insects, for diseases, for any other issues that could be going on with that crop. If it just doesn't look right, there are a lot of management steps he can take to make it better. Well, that's the thing. Farmers are looking at their crop and saying, well, oh boy, I see a leaf on these corn plants that just doesn't look quite right. Why, why is that happening? And maybe there's something below the ground that's wrong. Maybe there's something above the ground, or maybe it's just due to the weather that we've had recently. So it takes a lot of experience to make the right calls because many times when that happens, by the time you're seeing a problem on a plant, you've already lost some yield and so farmers are not only trying to fix this year's crop but they're making changes to their program for next year's crop as well so they don't make that same mistake again. Yeah but one of the biggest challenges with farming is the fact that there is mother nature and that's something that is beyond our control. So when you look at all these other factors that that end up happening out in the field they're heavily influenced by whatever mother nature does. So that's the whole thing is, well, is this just a weather thing or is there something I could have done to make that crop better along the way? And most of the time there are things that a farmer can do to make the crop better, but every year since it's a little bit different, you don't know if you've selected the right hybrid to put in the ground. If you've done the right thing in terms of weed control because some of them work better in cooler conditions, others work better in hotter conditions, it really varies. Well, I like how every year it's well this is a, a hotter than normal year and if you say that to a farmer a farmer is likely to say well what is a normal year I, I farm for 30 years and there's been no two years that are alike everything's a little bit different like this year for example we had all kinds of snow in April on our farm so by the time we got ready to plant it was May and last year we were all done planting by then so it's just a completely different thing now when you're planting in April you've got some different concerns versus when you're planting in May in May we weren't worried about having another frost after our crop was up because wow we're almost almost to summer now before we even get started planting where planting early in April that was a big concern for guys yeah it's warm now but it could cool off later on so you had to adjust a lot of things you were doing with everything you do in that field based on that particular year. So as crop farmers there are a lot of things to take a look at during the summertime to make the crop better. But in addition to that, you also have to start planning for the fall and the next few years. So you're looking at things like grain bins and buildings and trucks and, and crop rotation. You know, you have yep. an issue in that field. You say, well, wow, maybe I don't want to go back with that crop in that field. I'll have to change what my rotation was going to be. All right. So along those lines, Darren, you also could throw in, let's say, cover crops late in the season, even when the current crop is still out in the field, you can seed in some cover crops by air if you want to. That's starting to get to be a popular practice around the country. There are just a lot of things. And so 
Whether it's the winter time or the summertime, farmers are busy year round. It just depends on how much effort that farmer wants to put into his farm, how many acres he's farming, and how many things he's trying to do himself rather than hire someone else to do those jobs. But all I can tell you is from growing up on the farm and farming today, it's a lot of work. And some days you say, wow, this is just so much work to make all this go. But I mean, it is a lot of fun and it is rewarding in the end. Well, it does become more work if you have our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans. Extend your control. For years, farm logic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Micronutrients are not optional for plants, they are essential. TJ Micromix is a profit-proven management tool that ensures the availability of essential secondary and micronutrients. Formulated as a dry granule or liquid, TJ Micromix is plant available, easy to mix and apply. The synergistic fertilizer mix delivers consistent yield response on a variety of crops by complementing an NPK fertilizer program. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get your TJ Micromix today. Today's Case IH equipment is packed with industry-leading technology, and Titan Machinery has the experts to make it perform to its maximum potential. We have a team of specialists and the entire Titan Machinery Network to provide you with the expertise to keep up with today's advanced machines. Whether it be for your Case IH planters, sprayers, or precision farming equipment, our experts have the answers to get the most out of your equipment investment. Maximize your productivity with Titan Machinery. Better solutions. Your equipment's ready, the seed's in the barn. You have a strategy to overcome the challenges you'll face and your crop protection products are pretty well locked in. But maybe you still haven't finalized your fertilizer plans. If not, visit agroliquid.com today. With products formulated for superior nutrient uptake, unsurpassed application flexibility, and proven by years of extensive research, this may be the season to take your yields to the next level using agriculture liquid fertilizers. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. Soybean broadleaf herbicides, you know, Darren, just a few years ago, this was pretty easy because basically the one and only choice was Roundup. Oh wait, there was more Roundup. That was the other option. <laughs> well, you know, post-emerge, I guess it's hard to argue with, from an economic standpoint, if Roundup's working and you can kill all your weeds for two or three bucks an yep. acre, it's tough to pick a 10 or $15 herbicide to mix with it. So I don't blame farmers at all for using what works and what's economical for their farm to control weeds. But the point right now, Brian, is Roundup just isn't working on all the weeds that it used to. It's still working on most of them, yep. but there are a few troublesome weeds like Palmer pigweed, tall water hemp, well, giant this way, let's, Yeah, okay, let's get into that. So that's basically what it's come down to is Roundup resistant weeds is what we're worried about. Now, certainly you could switch to Liberty Link soybeans and then spray Liberty and that should control that's most things. That's just too easy, Brian. That's too easy. <laughs> we want to have it complicated. We want to mix no, several we really products don't. together, no, right? No, we have absolutely zero desire to do that, but unfortunately, <laughs> If you've got multiple Roundup resistant weeds out there, that's where you run into problems. So the most common ones, like Darren mentioned, Palmer pigweed and water hemp for sure. Those are probably the worst ones you can have. Then there's also ragweed, common ragweed and giant ragweed. Lamb's quarters may or may not be technically resistant, but Roundup really struggles to control that one. We've got wild buckwheat. We got a few others. Don't forget so. kosher. Kosher is really getting tough to control in the Dakotas and Montana, and that area is growing as well. So and the other thing, Brian, that really goes unmentioned is we. We've been relying on products like Roundup and Liberty now. Neither one of those has any residual control. Right, right. So when we're talking about adding these other products in, a lot of guys would say, well, I'm going to have to spend more money than I used to. Yes, 
but you are going to get some residual control and you're getting a different site of action attacking those weeds. You are, but I mean that residual is a little bit overrated late in the season because honestly crop canopy is the very best weed killer that there is. So if we've got good crop canopy up and going, then I'm not that terribly worried about it. But to your point, I mean, yes, we can get some residual out of some of the post-emerge herbicides, but let's talk first about lamb's quarters. The very best thing post-emerge is going to be harass, which is a generic version of the old Harmony SG or Harmony GT. But anyway, this harass, you're only gonna spend roughly a buck an acre, and it's very good on lamb's quarters. Problem is no residual. Well, and the other problem is, Brian, it doesn't get a whole lot of other weeds. I mean, yeah, <laughs> right. there are a few other weeds, but I mean, as far as the major weeds out there, like take, for example, Palmer pigweed or tall water hemp, guess what? They're resistant to those ALS type products and uh, it does nothing for those Okay, those so let's weeds. talk about those two weeds, Palmer pigweed and water hemp. The very best thing post-emerge would be Flexstar. Now you have to be a little careful with Flexstar depending on where you're at in the country. It's not even labeled in Western North Dakota, for example, because of carryover concerns. In other areas like where we farm in eastern South Dakota you might only be able to use 12 or 16 ounces per acre and in certain areas of the country you could even use more maybe but maybe Brad yeah the, we're the always scared about those products that have too much residual I'm nervous about the residual and the carryover and, and yes yep. a little bit of residual is good but those high rates I, I'm pretty scared about that especially if we end up with dry conditions like 2012 all of a sudden we were dry over much of the country and guys are like well I use this really pretty late in the season do you think I'll be okay I don't know. If you don't get normal yep. rainfall afterwards, who knows if you're going to be fine. Yep. The other thing is you can find some of that Flexstar type chemistry in some pre-emerge herbicides. And if you're using those, all of a sudden, hey, you can only use it once per year and that's gonna stop you from using it post-emerge. With Flexstar though, it is very good on Palmer pigweed and water hemp. We will usually only recommend a 12 ounce use rate because of the concern with carryover, but here's the problem. If you don't use Flexstar, if you're not able to use Flexstar, the next best thing is Cobra. And I'll just tell you it from, works. from years ago as an agronomist, I always used to tell guys, look, if you're gonna use Cobra, take a vacation for a couple of weeks because you're not gonna to wanna to look at those soybeans for a while. You may think that you killed the beans. Well, That's not he good. here's the thing. Let's just start with this. With Flexstar or with Cobra, guess how tall it'll kill pigweeds? Maybe two to four inches tall. If your pigweed is a foot tall, it's too late. Chances are you're not gonna bring it down with either of those products and you're in big trouble out in your field. So that's been the real challenge with Roundup resistant weeds now and ALS resistant weeds before them is by the time you figure out that you've got resistance, it's already too late to deal with it. So just plan that your weeds are resistant. Deal with them like they are. Don't just rely on Roundup or just rely on Liberty anymore. Mix something else with it, heat that mix up, and make sure you're taking care of those weeds the first time you go through. And then like Brian said, do everything you can do to make sure crop canopy happens quicker. That way you've got crop canopy to hold down any weeds that could come later. All right, let's continue on. Uh, why don't you rattle off some more of the resistant weeds and I'll throw out well, the Well, the toughest one, it. Brian, that I can think of right now is kochia. And that's new for a lot of guys because they've been doing a great job bringing it down yep. with Roundup. But all of a sudden we've got some areas that it's just not working anymore. Yep. What, what can you even do? Cobra is probably the best thing there. Flexstar would have some activity, but I would say Cobra is best. Okay, then we look at giant ragweed. That one is getting to be a, both a giant huge and Both giant and common. First rate would be the best thing. Flexstar would be number two, and number three would be Cobra in my book. Okay, well, you know, you look at other weeds that may or may not be resistant, like even velvet leaf is getting to be a tough one, and it grows fast. Yeah, but velvet leaf is easy, because you can go out there with Resource or Cadet, and you're going to absolutely annihilate that, even great big velvet leaf, so no big deal, and those products are pretty inexpensive. Okay, the other thing that we're running into this year is we're seeing more mare's tail that's coming in the spring. You know, it used to just be that winter annual, it started in the fall, we'd either wipe it out with tillage or with our first shot of burn down or whatever in the spring. Now we've got some mare's tail that's popping up okay. in crop. For a single product, first rate would be the best. If you want to do a combination, something we've had okay luck with on our farm, is a combination of Flexstar and Classic. So either way, whichever way you go, you're not going to get 100%, but it's not bad. But here again, you're mentioning different products for almost every weed That's we're right. talking about. Right. How do you put together a program then if I've got three of those different weeds? You have to I've put got... them all together. Just talk to your agronomist because sometimes all three may be able to go together, sometimes not. The other concern is what you're going to do with adjuvants. So maybe you want crop oil with one thing, but oh, if I put something else in the tank, now I got to cut back to non-ionic surfactant. How's that going to affect everything? It really Really varies. Well, adjuvants is one thing, Brian, but what about spray tips? When we're talking about spraying straight Roundup, we like those drift reduction type tips when we've got a little bit of a breeze out there just to make sure we don't have problems. But now we're talking about some of these products, like you were saying, harass. Well, that's a contact weed killer. 
We've got to have great coverage. We have to have small droplets that are going to completely coat that weed if we want to have good luck. And you can't do that if you're spraying it with Roundup and you're completely worried about drift. So you may consider using flat fan nozzles or at least being able to switch to them. You may have to spray at different times of the day to try and completely avoid the wind as much as possible. Just a lot of different considerations there. Okay, the last resistant weed I can think of would be wild buckwheat. Whether you want to call it resistant or not, Roundup's just not very good on it. The very best thing would be Pursuit. Flexstar also has has pretty good activity. Pursuit not only will kill it when it's already up, but it does leave real good residual too. Well, that's sure a lot of different weeds there and a lot of different herbicide choices. So when you're talking about broadleaf weed control, make sure you're talking to your agronomist in your local area about what you can do about the weeds you guys have in, in the crops that we're talking well, about. Well, the, the other thing is just download the free iPad, iPhone, smartphone app that we've got. It's called Field Guide. You can look up Ag PhD or Field Guide and you'll find that app out there. Again, it's free and then you can go under all these different weeds that we talked about and look at our best recommendations for corn, soybeans, wheat, and we also have some other information in there too. Yeah, and you might even find some information about our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrec technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Today's number is three. You can see it everywhere, and it can stand for almost anything. But when it comes to protecting the nitrogen that feeds your crops, three is the special number that sets Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager apart because Nutrisphere N has proven to reduce all three forms of nitrogen loss, which adds up to keeping more nitrogen and yield where it belongs. So ask for Nutrisphere N, the stabilizer that fights nitrogen loss three ways. All right, Brian, there are fields out there that frankly look like they need a little more nitrogen to them. They need a little pick-me-up. Yep. You can just see maybe they're a little lighter shade of green, uh, not necessarily yellow, or, or they're just kind of struggling to get up and go. Okay. Uh, is nitrogen the problem or well, what's going on? First of all, as a general rule, if you can see a problem in your crop, you've already lost yield. So that's the bad oh, news. Oh, that's encouraging. Yep, that's the bad news. The good news is you can still recover or at least help your plant recover now and capture most of its yield as you go throughout the season. But you need to identify what's the real problem. So that's the reason why we encourage every farmer out there at least do some plant tissue analysis. Certainly we want you to do soil testing, take a look at that, but also do plant tissue analysis and just see what is your crop really short on? Because I've had it before where I thought, oh, hey, we've got a sulfur problem. Uh, no, we had a micronutrient problem. And if I can't even figure it out, and I'm studying the stuff every day, now I'm not as sharp as Darren here, but I can't, if I can't do it every day, you know, I just look at 
boy, I, I, don't, I don't think on our farm anybody can probably say with a 100% degree of certainty, we know exactly what the deal is. So I look at other farms around the country, that's why I always tell people, just do some tissue analysis. Well, it's inexpensive. I, I couldn't agree with you more about that whole smart comment, but also <laughs> the tissue analysis, Brian, because you know when you look at it, you don't know what's going on in that plant, but the plant can actually tell you what's going on if you take a plant tissue test. However, don't just take one ever on your farm and say, oh, I took this one tissue test, it says I'm short in this or that. What you need to do is take them one per week uh, throughout the season. You know, maybe you do it for a month just to kind of get started with it, or maybe you do like we do. We'll take a 10 or 12 week period and just look all the way through the growing season. How is that plant taking in nutrients? How is it changing? You know, because when we see rainfall events, all of a sudden, boom, that flushes a whole bunch of nutrients into our plants. And then when we're dry for a few weeks, all of a sudden those nutrient levels start going down. So moisture can certainly come into play there, but it also is a good indication of what's going on if you're doing regular tissue analysis. So the two main reasons why we're talking about this today is number one, there's still time to do something this year. And number two, what we find all over the country is there are plant food deficiencies. For a lot of farmers that I talk to all around the country, it's not so much providing enough plant food, it's, well, I just don't want to spend more than $200 an acre on fertilizer. That's my limit. <laughs> I'm going, why? Why is that your limit? I mean, let's look at return on investment on everything you do. And I'm not telling you just randomly go over fertilize. But what I am saying is if we all can, and I'm including myself here, get smarter on fertility and figure out what the crop really needs, maybe we need some more investment in something. In our own operation for years, we kept putting too much nitrogen on until we finally figured out through soil testing and tissue analysis, hey, we don't need nitrogen, we need potassium, boron, and zinc. So we took some of our nitrogen dollars, put over into these other nutrients. That's what I'm talking about. We could go on all day on this topic, Brian, but the point is you just have to put some effort into your crop, find out what's going on, take some plant tissue analysis, see what nutrients you're really short in, and be honest with yourself. Did you just not put enough on, or is there something going on in the soil that you can fix? Well, one of the concerns on your farm may be our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. You work to protect your farm's legacy and to keep it going. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our weed of the week is white clover. And Brian, we probably see it more in lawns than anywhere else. Yep, and it is kind of tough to control in lawns because a lot of times all these products that you can buy at the hardware store or something, they're really watered down. No offense, but I want to get well, the real stuff. Be, they're supposed to be ready to use. And, <laughs> right. and yeah, I like the concentrated versions where I control what that concentration right. is. Now, when we're talking about white clover, there's a few ways you can go. We're talking about a perennial weed here, so it's going to be a big time problem. It has a big, serious root system. So all you can do is either A, use 2,4-D repeatedly throughout the season. I'm talking probably three times, going out, really burning it down, then when it starts to regrow, really burn it again. And the most important ones are gonna be early in the spring, so you can get grass established around it and try and choke it out. And also in the fall, when you can try and kill it before you go into winter when it's trying to store up its reserves. There is one product for lawns that's a little bit better in terms of residual, that's called Drive. And there are a few other ones that you might find out well, there dri too. Well, Drive's also better in that you don't have as much of a drift concern as 2,4-D. 2,4-D can have vapor drift where it can actually pick up and move. With Drive, if you actually get it to land safely where you want it to be, you don't have to worry as much about your flowers or your trees. Yep, so in other words, Drive is something to use more in the middle of the year or especially right around this time. All right, let's talk in crop because frankly, we don't see eye to eye on this. In Roundup Ready corn or soybeans, I think Roundup's great if you can use a couple of quarts, which you can, or, or you know, four pound I'm talking, so 44 ounces of power max in soybeans. It's gonna wipe it out, Darren. Well, I don't think it's really great. I think a lot of guys are having better luck using some dicamba, especially well, hitting it in the soybeans. fall. You can go out in the fall, 
before you're gonna plant soybeans next spring, that would be okay. Dicamba does a nice job, it burns it quick, and that's why guys like it, but it doesn't get down to the root system like Roundup. So I would recommend if you could do a fall application, go with the strongest rate of Roundup that's possibly labeled. That would be the way to totally wipe out white clover. Corn, status, soybeans, Roundup, wheat, husky. That's about all we got. All right, well that's it for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Could one of the least fun jobs actually be a $100 per hour job in disguise? In today's Iron Talk, we'll discuss proper tank cleanout procedures. I almost had you with that opening line, didn't I? Come on, $100 an hour sounds pretty good. If it's your farm and your sprayer, you'll certainly save yourself that much and probably a lot more by doing a great job cleaning out your spray tank when you're switching products. So how do you do it right? First of all, each herbicide you spray may need a little different product to clean it out of the tank. So read the label and ask your supplier what works best for the chemicals you're using. It may be commercial tank cleaner, it may be household ammonia or bleach, who knows? Second, Clean the tank as soon as you're done spraying, so the product is still in the liquid form and easiest to rinse out. Third, after rinsing the tank out once or twice, fill up the tank with water and commercial tank cleaner and charge the booms. Then leave it sit overnight and let the cleaner work. Then rinse it all out. Pay special attention to sprayer sumps, pumps, screens, and strainers. Also, make sure to check all the places contamination can hang up, like around spray tips and out at the ends of the booms. Yes, this is a little bit of work. The benefits are fantastic though. Peace of mind as you're spraying out your next batch without fear of damaging your crop. No neighbors giving you a hard time about a field with brown spots in it. Easily a $100 per hour job. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is a head above the rest. What's new for 2013? Challenge 2050. Challenge 2050 is a two component system consisting of a nutrient and a biological additive. This groundbreaking fertilizer contains mycorrhizal fungi which provide an extended transport system that allows water and nutrients to be delivered directly into the root. Challenge 2050 can increase yield and efficiency of your standard fertilizer program. Challenge 2050 is the future of fertilizer. Call TJ Technologies or your fertilizer dealer and get Challenge 2050 today. There are more mouths to feed than ever before. What are farmers doing to meet the challenge? They're using agronomically designed equipment from Case IH. Our Quattrack technology, soil management, and planting systems are designed to foster a better growing environment that helps farmers maximize yield potential. And our deep understanding of agriculture is preparing them for the challenges ahead. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Go to CaseIH.com to learn more. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Avail makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.9 .9 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with Avail. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all-new SQ Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full-functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self-contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.
Plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.